Yay! Hey! And the dog's come in, who's definitely not allowed in the studio. Hello. Hey everyone, how are we doing? And welcome back to another video. You can see we're in the studio today and we're doing something quite important because I'm finally getting around to doing a full custom loop with my own personal PC. This is the PC that I've been using for the last few months or so and I use this for absolutely everything, gaming, editing, everything in between really. We've got an RTX 2080 Ti in here, we've got a 10920X Intel 12 core CPU in here, it's running a little bit overclocked at the moment, we've got this 280mm radiator at the front and this is pretty much why I want to update everything because while it looks incredible, airflow on this thing it's okay, I mean it's not bad but it's not really good enough for what I've been using in it. As you can see I've actually got the side panel off just because it's been overheating. I don't know what it is about that Zotec graphics card, I have a feeling I need to take it apart and sort of see if something is actually wrong with it under the hood because unless you put a specific fan profile on it, it hits 85 degrees and then shuts down, which is pretty useless to be honest, which is why we are going to be doing a little bit of a case swap. This is the P600S that I water cooled previously, so all of the stuff is in here. I'm gonna redo the tubing as well, but I'm gonna put my internals in here. We're updating the power supply. I've had this one for years. This one's from Corsair, it's the HX. 1200i which means we can use some custom cables with this these are corsairs sort of white and black stuff and look at my organization look pc tray one but first a quick word from this video's sponsor asus and their awesome tough a15 this do-it-all gaming laptop is not only capable of playing the latest games at sky high frame rates but it does so without breaking the bank Bask in the light of its super fast 144Hz display, get to the top of the leaderboard with NVIDIA's GTX and RTX graphics cards, and then play comfortably with Tuff's excellent keyboard and cooling solutions. Check it out today with the links down below. Here we go then. This is always a little bit nerve wracking. I mean, just modifying your own personal PC is, but when you're actually talking about water cooling, this is obviously the next level. This won't be the complete end of the road for me in this case though. It definitely has its place. It's just not a high airflow case, so if you're doing anything that's a little bit more, not even budget friendly, but something that isn't as intense as this, then you're not going to run into too many issues to be honest with you, especially if you don't put this big whacking radiator here, you have maybe an air-cooled system, I'd say this is more what this is sort of geared towards. Not exactly going to be the most difficult thing to take apart though, because all I need to do is remove the graphics card and of course the CPU cooler. I mean, it's definitely a little bit dusty inside, but there's not really anything in here that's a dead giveaway as to why my thermal performance was so bad. Three fans, you would expect this to be pretty quiet and do a very good job cooling, but compare it to Asus's Strix card that I'm using downstairs in my living room PC, it's just a completely different league. I do not understand. This is not only too loud, but it shuts down and the Strix card only gets to about 65 degrees, so something is clearly very wrong with this. Interestingly though, there weren't any issues with the CPU cooler. This has done a fantastic job, even in this rather restricted case. It's definitely not the most efficient chip out there, the 12 core 10920X, it runs pretty hot. This thing has been able to tame it, which is pretty impressive. I will be sad to see it go, I will no longer have a load of, I don't know, RGB GIFs in my PC anymore. What am I gonna do? This is where PC build tray number two comes in handy. Nice and organized, you see, I'm learning. You should learn from the best, which is someone else. SSD, 10 gig networking card, RGB unit that was useless because I trapped the end of the cable underneath the motherboard when I installed it, but I didn't tell you guys because it was embarrassing. Check. Here comes the board. I think we brought a little standoff friend with us as well, look. How nice is that? When we say in PC build videos you might need pliers, this is exactly why. So we can be pretty much done with this PC for now. I'll sort that out later, which leaves us with the task of fixing up our new motherboard. And the really exciting bit is we're not actually using this CPU. Because the lovely people over at Intel decided it would be a good idea to upgrade me to an 18 core CPU. So this is the 10980XE. Never dreamed I would even be holding this, let alone be putting it in my own personal system. But there you go, dreams do come true. Let's be totally real for a second though. This is definitely going to be major overkill. And the main problem really with these chips is that they do run very hot. I mean, if you think the 12 core, as I was saying earlier, can run quite hot, this is obviously a different league entirely. But for putting in something like a custom loop, I think this is actually arguably the right choice. If you are going to want to be overclocking, you're going to want to be playing games at high refresh rates, and of course using it for all of like the 6K video editing and stuff like that that I use on my channel. So bye bye to 12 core, and hello 
to the 18. I put that in the wrong way around. With all of that out of the way, it does mean we can now actually start our water cooling, which means putting a block on it. We are once again using Corsair Hydro X, and don't worry, we're gonna be using some other brands in future videos, but I'm, I'm still a little bit out of my comfort zone, okay? And I've used this a couple of times, I know how it works, I'm, I'm okay with it. So we're going for the XC9, because this is of course a larger CPU, needs a larger block. I don't really have many bad things to say about the Hydro X system, to be honest. It's worked very well for me in the past. The only thing I don't like is the pump. I think it looks a little bit ugly, like the pump reservoir. It'd be nice to see something with a little bit more styling, but I guess form over function is probably a good thing for their first products, but it'd be interesting to see what they get from here. It looks to me like this is going to be ridiculously easy to install, just quite literally place down if you're using Intel and screw on top of your CPU. That is the easiest thing I've ever done. And I've done some not easy things in my time. And then that should be that really. Here you can see we have our completed motherboard water cooling block combination. We are of course going to be using a Hydro X graphics card as well. So this is gonna slot in nicely down here, just like so and then we can build our loop. Right, so let's have a look at this big boy then and explain to you how this is going to work. So it's quite a big case, it's not too big, but it fits all of the hardware in with room to spare, which is nice. We've got our pump res combination mounted against the sort of like brackets at the back. It's not the most secure thing, but it's absolutely fine. We do have a drain valve fitted, which is very useful, especially if you're doing hardline soft, it's not essential, but it makes it a whole lot easier. 240 millimeter radiator at the top, 360 at the front. We're not gonna go for a vertical GPU mount as I'm gonna be using all of these slots, so it just makes it a whole lot easier. Other than that, not really too much to report really. We do need to put our power supply in. We can bring out our old trusty friend, Mr. Bracket. I would say he's been very, very good to me over the years, but actually he hasn't. He broke the first time I used it, which was annoying. Oh, I'll tell you what I really don't like about both RGB fans and all of this water cooling malarkey, it's just how many things you have to plug in. Like, look at this mess. I know I'll be able to tidy it up later, but I don't want to. We can now slot our GPU back into place. I really hope this chip works. If it doesn't, I will have egg on my face. I've obviously got my other PCIe cards, but I'm not sure whether it's actually worth putting these in until I've leak tested it. Yeah, I'll put them in after. Okay, which does mean then we can start building our loop. I know the runs, I'm used to doing this. I'm not reusing the same tubing, just to sort of err on the side of caution. I think I have enough. Always start from the pump and work your way around as you're much less likely to run into any leaks if you do that. Obviously the whole elephant in the room with this thing is that Ampere is right around the corner. And I don't want this to be too difficult to drain if I do get hold of like a liquid cooled card next time round. And with that, we are done. It's still not the most perfect loop in the whole world. I'm not happy with this. It should be fine. It's the last bit of the loop. And while it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit restricted, it's more just a visual thing, really. I mean, there's no, it sort of looks worse. It's like the reflections, it, make it makes it look a little bit bent when it's not. Everything else though, I think looks pretty damn tidy. Let's get this leak tested. We're going for green fluid today. Oh, that's very green. That's fluorescent green. I didn't expect that. It's not pastel -y. It's obviously like a more of a clear, transparent or translucent, I suppose. Nothing immediately obvious, but should, of course, always give ourselves some protection. I was genuinely about to try and turn it on then, but I haven't plugged the computer into the wall. That's more like it. We have a loop. I'll give it around about half an hour, an hour, just to make sure all of the air bubbles start to disappear. Or I'll give it a little bit of agitation, but obviously mainly just to make sure that there aren't any leaks. Then I get all of the cables plugged in properly, get that SSD and the ethernet card back in and see what it looks like turned on. Right, here we go then, moment of truth. All the cables are plugged in. It's looking pretty neat and tidy. I did have a bit of a mare. Um, hopefully it's not a big deal at all, but I actually plugged in the CPU power while the power supply was on powering the pump. 
because I was a little bit of a numpty, but everything else should be ready to go. I think I've turned it off at the back. I bloody hope so. Okay, so we have fans. Whoa, that looks incredible. Please work, please work, please work. The screen has done something. Oh my God, this is the best looking PC I've ever put together by a long margin. Please work, please work. It should say new CPU installed. Yay! <laughs> 10980XE. And the dog's come in, who's definitely not allowed in the studio. Hello. He's, he's excited. <laughs> Does our computer work? It's just the graphics driver, it's okay, it's okay. I, I know we thought the whole thing had blown up, but not yet. Our CPU is at a super toasty 33 degrees. As is always the case with HydroX loops, you're going to want to go into the IQ, and then where it says HydroX detected, run the wizard, and then the fans will automatically now adjust to be super quiet and they're only sort of spin up when they need to. In theory, the whole loop is taken care of. I do like to make a few tweaks to the pump speeds just to tailor make it, I guess, to my liking, but out of the box does it very, very well. Of course, I've clearly thought about this. My absolute favourite thing about water cooling though, other than how it looks, is all about the silence. As currently we're running Cinebench, and if you think, if you've run that before, your whole system will go into overdrive and it will be like, you know, sound like a vacuum cleaner, it will go mad with all of the fans spinning up. Because there is so much heat capacity in a custom loop, we're currently sitting at, what's that, 65 degrees without any of the fans spinning really at all. The pump is at its minimum speed but the CPU is at maximum load, and that goes to show just what this system can do. You think we can overclock this, we can actually make the fans spin up, we can make the pump do its thing if we want to, but if you're like myself and you'd just rather have something that's completely silent under all loads, this is what it's all about, and it's very exciting. 9,218. Oh, that is not bad. Unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and rainbows for me just yet though, because I have run into a little bit of a strange problem and I still can't quite put my finger on what it is. I'm really hoping I can fix it and I'm gonna ask your advice on this one. But in terms of the actual gaming performance, it seems to me like the graphics card is almost like holding itself back a little bit because, by a little bit, I mean by a fair bit. So we've currently got here Apex Legends 3440 by 1440. This is how I play my games, right? But the issue is that the frame rate just isn't as high as it should be. So maybe my memory is completely wrong. I remember Apex Legends getting around about 170 to 200 frames a second. Yeah, I'm currently getting around about 130. And yes, I know first world problems, right? This, uh, this is still loads of frames a second. But the point is, if it's not performing properly, I'm not entirely sure why. We're obviously completely fine thermally. We're not seeing anything above 60 degrees or so. And the other interesting thing is that in terms of clock speeds and things, those are actually running at what I'd expect. I've tried overclocking it a little bit and you can get a little bit more out of it, but it seems almost like there's either a software issue, maybe something with PCIe lanes. I do have a lot of devices in here, but it's a little bit baffling. So I'm going to try to fix it in the next couple of days, of course, but I'd really like to hear from you on this one. Is there anything that you could think that would be limiting a graphics card from doing its full thing? Is it just going to be software? Is there something else going on that could almost, I don't know, make a graphics card run at a lower, I say lower speed, but that's the point, it's running at its full speed, so I'm not entirely sure. Any suggestions as to why this thing isn't running at full pelt when it looks like it is would be massively, massively appreciated. Remember, normally you're going to have some sort of noise in the room, and currently I've just got absolutely nothing. It's really eerie in here. You can just about make out the pump, but as soon as you actually have anything playing at all, you know, it's, it's, it is essentially silent. Crazy. But other than that little software problem, we are now mission complete, and my personal gaming editing system is ready. Let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below. I know I keep going on about it, but I absolutely love the way that this system looks. I think these are definitely my favorite PC components really all put into one particular system. This RAM in particular, I think it's one of the best things that Corsair make in terms of visuals because it looks both tasteful and it's bright, it's attractive. I love this little stack effect that you have going on here. 
I said originally that I would wish that this was a black CPU block, but actually it isn't bad that it stands out. I think it gives it a little bit extra edge. Green fluid gets my thumbs up as soon as you put some lighting behind it. I've got RGB strips all the way along here at the top if you're wondering what gives it that little bit, I don't know, extra panaz or panache, is that the right word? I don't know. But the main thing really is just to try and get this GPU working at its full potential. I know it's in there, so it's probably just a software thing. Hopefully uh, a few driver tweaks should actually sort that out for me. I will be doing a, another water cooling build with this, the XD3. This is a little bit of a smaller pump res, and it's just a case really now of finding just that, a case to actually put this in. Um, I was originally gonna put it in that 510i from NZXT, but to be honest, I think there's probably something a little bit smaller we could park that in. But let me know your thoughts on this. Is this the best system I've put together so far? Do you prefer some of the other cases, some of the other builds I've done? Really interested to hear from you, so let me know down in that comment section below. And as always, you can find the full links to everything featured in this PC down in the description below with my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Asus and the crazy tough A15 gaming laptop. If you want to get PC gaming and a fully portable package, then look no further. Get to the top of the leaderboard with NVIDIA's GTX and RTX graphics cards, and then super fast memory and storage. All of this in this gorgeous teal blue package. Get yours today with the link down below. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed this, it really does help out, you honestly wouldn't believe. Let me know what you want to see next, and a massive thank you to everyone for watching, and of course all of the manufacturers that have supplied the parts for this build over the years. It is much appreciated. Thank you so much, I'll see you in the next one. Now I have to go and take this, plug it back in and actually edit this video.